Yo, what's up guys? It is Power D back with another video. And the time is here, the moment I've been waiting for. I my list of the top 10 best my park players in NBA 2K19. Now, before I even get to begin the list, I want to clarify some things so you guys aren't confused when I'm making this list. Number one, these rankings are on skill. Skill at the game, not entertainment. These are not who I think are the most entertaining YouTubers or the best who make the best videos. These are just the YouTubers I think are the best at the game. If it was entertainment, it'd be a totally different list. Number two, I had to make a sub cutoff for this just so the list would be organized. You have to have 50K plus subscribers to be considered for this. The reason is that is if we try to do any kind of sub count, you can be anybody, then it's like we're gonna start picking people that we know. I don't know everybody in the community. I don't know everybody who plays, but I do know everybody with 50K plus. I don't want I don't want somebody being like, oh, this guy with 500 subs is super good, and he's now on the list because I never heard of him. You know what I'm saying? I can't know everybody. So this is just a list of people that are 50K plus, bigger YouTubers, and who I think are best at the game out of them. Number three, it's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? It can't be wrong. <laughs> don't go out here and be like, oh, you're wrong. This person is no. It's my opinion. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know want to hear already. I don't want to hear that already where people are complaining about how I got something wrong or this person should be on top. It's literally my opinion. Number four, if you guys want me to do like a My Park Awards thing, kind of like a Lando thing, I'll do something like that. If you guys like this video, there's gonna be 4,000 likes on this video. I'm hyped about it. Y'all can comment what kind of changes you guys would make in this list. Who do you think should be higher? Who do you think should be lower? But like I said, it's my opinion. So <laughs> if you don't like it, get over it, man. But let's get into the video. Uh, uh, I'm feeling your energy. And shorty, man, she really into me. I got lots of enemies and they wanna act like they friends with me. Okay guys, so coming in at number 10, I have God Chiller. He's good. He's to me, he's one of the best scorers in the game. He knows how to do everything on offense. He knows what works and doesn't work. He's played a lot of comp this year. I have to give him credit. He played Ticino. He beat him 3-0 in the series. He um won the Troy this tournament. I remember he won that one or two times. And I gotta give him a lot of credit for that. But the reason why he's at number 10 and I can't put him higher up on this list is because I feel like he's one of the biggest cheesers and explorers at the game. And what I mean by that is every way you can exploit the game, then that's what he uses. He D pads pretty much every single possession back and forth. You see him doing a lot of that. You see him using LT um, pretty much almost every possession if he's playing stage or park. Um, and also when pushing was out, I remember there was a controversy because a lot of times he would push in these tournaments the to win. Now, obviously it's allowed, but at the same time, it's kind of a scummy thing to do. And I feel like his game depends a lot on using these exploits, like LT and D padding. And I feel like the people in front of him on his list, even though he's good, I feel like they don't depend on those exploits as much as he does. Now coming in at number nine is Duke Dennis. He's one of the most unique scorers in the game. And I'm impressed by how he chose this archetype because in my opinion, a shot creating stretch is a better build than a pure stretch. So the fact that he chose this at the beginning of the game and basically at 99, his archetype is unstoppable. He plays different he can do everything a pure scratch can do but he can do these fades the step bats he has so much more moves in his arsenal than a normal stretch does and that's why he has to be up here at number nine but the reason why i couldn't put him higher is because he's lost some of the big games that other people on higher on this list have number nine is very high but he lost this high 32 so i haven't seen him been proven against those top people that um, put him higher on this list coming in at number eight I have Bandit, that's I know Bandit. Now, he's very skilled. He's one of the best point forwards in the game, in my opinion. He's one of the best dribblers in the game, in my opinion. He's played a lot of comp, he's beat a lot of comp. He beat TJ two times. He, I think he swept him twice. He beat him 2-0 twice, earlier in the year, later on in the year, he's consistently beating them. Um, when TJ's a very good player with a high win percentage. He's played Nadets, and he's won some games, he's lost some games, it's been kind of on and off. His passing IQ really impresses me because a lot of point forwards are good, but it's like a lot of point forwards are just so focused on themselves and dribbling and they just forget about their teammates. Bandit is a great passer. If you're open, Bandit's going to hit you every single time. You cannot 
and you cannot ball watch on Bandit. You just, you just can't do it. You can't do it. He got that Hall of Fame Dimer. He has Stumpy as his duo, Stumpy and Bandit. Once Stumpy and Bandit got together as a duo, I haven't seen them lose much at all. But I couldn't put him high on this list just because his games with Nadets were back and forth. Like, he's won a lot, but he's also lost a lot. A lot of people higher up on this list have won more consistently and beaten more competition than he has. So, that's why he is at number 8. Coming in at number 7, I have my man Ticino. He's played so much comp. He did so much for the community this year. Um, he traveled all the way from his home in New Zealand. I don't know why people think he's from Australia, but he traveled from his home in New Zealand. And he beat Cole. He beat Steezo. Steezo was one of the biggest upsets in the year. People thought Steezo was the greatest player ever. And he beat Steezo. He beat Duke Dennis. And he did it all with a 6-3 shot creator. That was the most impressive part to me. 6-3 shot creator with minimum wingspan. I saw him clamping these people. He has very good defense. He's, he scores differently. He uses moves that I've never seen other people use. Like, he has a, a very different play style. Like, other shot creators don't play like Ticino. They don't do the phase. They don't do the floaters. They don't do the step bats. The arsenal, the, you know what I'm saying? His play style is so unique, and I love that about him. And he utilizes every aspect of his game. I feel like a lot of people, when they're shot creators, they don't utilize and they don't use all the moves that a shot creator can do. But Ticino, he uses it all. He really does. But the problem and the reason I can't put him higher up on this list is... He's lost to a lot of people um, higher up on this list, so that's one reason. But number two, I feel like his defense is a liability. It's not really his fault, it's just his build. He made a 6 3 pure shot creator. So if you play someone really good at offense, it's just, there's nothing he can do. You know what I mean? Any player with good at offense will just expose him just because he's short and he's, he's playing at a disadvantage. So his archetype really holds him back and being higher up on this list. But I, gotta, I had to put him at the seven. So. Yeah, that's why he's number seven right there. Okay, coming in at number six, I have my man G Sykes. He's very comp. He's the first 99 overall last year. He was on his way to being one of the first 99 overalls this year, if not the very first before he got that injury with the carpal tunnel syndrome. I remember he was one of the top finishers in the LSK tournament. He was going off dominating stage earlier, and he came back from his injury. And he beat Ticino. And I don't think he was fully healed or anything. That just shows. He was going for months. He came back and he still beat one of the best players, Ticino. And that just, to me, it proves how goaded he is at the game. And how, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's one of those players that's just going to be good every single year. He just is. So it's harder to put him higher on this list, though, is because he was going for so long. We haven't seen him play that often as other people on this list. I haven't seen him play the entire year because he was going for, what, like six or seven months. But... It, I want to see more from him, and I want to see him play more competition. But if he had, if he had been here the entire year, he would definitely be higher. But that's why I have to keep him here at number six. Okay, and coming in at number five, I have Hank the Tank. He's one of the best play sharps in the game, in my opinion. He won Jordan's tournament, like, literally multiple times. He won the finals. He won multiple times before that. He's won with different kinds of people. Him and Hollywood played great together. I've seen him win with other people. I saw him finish very highly. I think he was running up in the LSK tournament at the beginning of the year. He's been a lot of comp. He went away from 2K for like two or three months. I remember he had an upload. He came back and he still beat Ticino. That was impressive to me. There were some questions about that game, how Ticino was playing around and everything, but you still have to give Hank credit for him winning that game. And to me, he's been consistently good for multiple years. He's somebody that I've seen be good in 18, be good in 17, be good at 19, be good at 16, be good even like 15 and 14. Every single year, it seems like Hank has been good to me. But it's hard for me to put him higher on that list just because he took a big break from that game from two to three months, and he hasn't been playing competitively recently. He's kind of just been chilling, just uploading his videos, playing some Fortnite. So uh, people higher on this list have been playing competitively more often than he has. So that's why I have to keep him at number five. Okay, coming in at number four, I have La Monster. La Monster, La Monster, La Monster. He's one of the best. He has one of the best records on the game. He has a 95 win percent. So that's actually insane. He beat Ticino 3-1 in their 2v2 matchup when Ticino was playing everybody. Even though he, the impressive thing about me, to me about that, was that he, he doesn't really play twos that often. He's pretty much a threes player. Um, he plays with flow jerk and a scratch usually but it's the fact that he went on twos and won that that was impressive to me he to me he's also one of the smartest players and he plays with a lot of iq like i feel like i feel like he always makes the right pass he always makes the right choices like you know what i mean he's one of those people that plays very smart and but the reason why i couldn't put him higher personally is because we're getting really high in the list right now we're at number four 
and it's like he feels one dimensional in the way he usually plays threes and he doesn't play threes twos it doesn't seem like he plays all the modes as the people higher on this list is and his game isn't as well rounded as the people above him like i feel like he's a very good offensive player but i feel like his defense is held back a little bit by his archetype so that's why i have to keep him at number four now number three this isn't biased at all i'm just being real Number three, I have Grindin Dia. To me, he's one of the best stretches on the game. He gets open, like he gets open extremely easily. But the reason I had to put him up here is because he does it without using a lot of the exploits that you'll see other stretches use, like the D pad and back and forth. Grindin like almost never D pads. He doesn't have to use LT to get open. He just, you know what I'm saying? He does it with all the glitches and exploits, the pushing. He never pushed. And he does it, he, he's one of the best stretches to me at like shot selection. Like a lot of stretches, what I'll see is stretches are a really good archetype. They're overpowered archetypes. But a lot of stretches don't realize what you can shoot. They'll only shoot if they're like completely wide open. Grindin knows what shots may look contested or may look like he's being guarded, but he knows what he can still make. He pretty much like, he's, show, he's shown what kind of shots stretches can make. And I feel like a lot of stretches really can't shoot the shots he does or don't know when to shoot like he does. He's also, to me, he's like a super smart player. Like a lot of people just waste moves. I feel like he plays super smart. He always makes the right pass. He always makes the right decision. He doesn't force shots or spam unnecessary moves. And that's what I like about him. Now, he, the comp he played, he beat T-Jack 2-0 with me, of course. But, and he's consistently beating comp throughout the year. I haven't seen like Gaiden lose or somebody beat him in like a comp game like this entire year. It's hard to think. Like. I can't think of anybody that just pulled up and beat him in a comp game. So every time he's been faced with those competitive games, he's beaten them. And he has a bit, but the reason I can't put Grindin higher up on this list is he has a very offensive oriented build. He's a pure stretch. He's one of the best offensive players, but it's like a pure stretch can't really contribute that much or change the game on defense. And he can't really rebound or help in that other way. So his benefits to the team are mainly limited to offensively and he cannot impact the ball defensively the same way as people higher up on this list the number one and number two spots can so that's why we're gonna have to keep him at number three now coming in at number two oh i have poi boy sense he has the most wins in nba 2k19 with a 93 win percentage he wins, it's hard, like, he wins, like, every competitive game against any kind of lineup. He consistently wins. He plays a million games. He's played almost every kind of lineup you can think of, and he just continues to win, win, and win. To me, he's one of the most well-rounded players. Like, yeah, he's a good offensive player, but what impresses me the most about him is his defense. You know what I'm saying? He plays very good defense. Most YouTubers, and what you'll notice is a lot of people think they're good because they are very good offensive players. Like, they can score the ball. Like, all these people can score the ball. A lot of YouTubers can score the ball. But what I see from Sin is he plays super good defense. His defense is amazing. You know what I'm saying? And he plays so efficient. Like, he doesn't spam unnecessary moves. A lot of people just hate that and try to diss him for that. But he doesn't spam any unnecessary moves. He doesn't need to score. He just scores. He just wins. And I love that. I actually do. Now... His performance against Ticino in his 3-0 sweep pretty much validates like how good he is. That's to me is what all the other play sharps and bar handlers should have done. <laughs> he just he just dominated. He clamped Ticino on defense. He dominated on offense. It was the whole package. But why I have to keep him at number two is because his location on West servers. I haven't seen him play a lot of the known people on this list that um other people have just because of he's been on west servers and the thing about west servers people don't understand if he plays against people on east then he's delayed if these people play against him they're delayed so we haven't seen them play a lot of the known youtubers that others have but that's why i have to keep him at number two okay now i want to go over my honorable mentions and these are guys that are really close to the top 10 but they didn't quite make it in before we get to the number one spot Number one in honorable mentions is Steezo the God. He looked very good in his clips, and he, a lot of people thought he was one of the best players or probably the best player in the game for a while. But the reason why I couldn't put him high up on this list is because I looked very heavily in um, this video at competitive games. Have we seen you play live? 
You know what I'm saying? A lot of people can edit. I know how YouTubers do. A lot of people can edit and make themselves look better than they are. But when you play live, you can't change how you are. It's just it's your game really shows. So when he lost to Ticino and he, to me, he struggled to score against a 6 3 guard with minimum wingspan, that prevented me from putting him high on this list. But there's always next year. So he could probably make it next year. Next on this list for honorable mentions is Joe Knows. To me, he's he's one of the most versatile. He's probably more versatile than everybody on this list. Like he's, he's good at many archetypes. I've seen him play point forward. I've seen him play scratch. I've seen him use all these accounts, and it seems like every single one he's still he's just good at. But the reason why I couldn't put him high on this list is I don't I don't really know where archetype to rank him in. You know what I mean? Because it's like he's good at so many different things. But if I compare him on one thing, it's like his point forward is what he mainly uses now. But I don't think he's a better to point forward than guys like Bandit and Sin, even though he's a good point forward. You feel me? So I feel like if he focused more on one archetype, and I could see him being the best at that archetype, then I could put him higher or on this list. But that's for the honorable mentions is G-Man. G-Man is good in my opinion, but I couldn't put him on this list because I haven't seen him play many competitive live matches this year where he just plays. I, he didn't participate in the Ticino thing. I didn't see him in the Troyden thing. I didn't see him play like competitively in a game that mattered. So I wanna see more of him playing live, but it's hard to put somebody on one of these lists, like objectively, if you don't really know and you haven't seen them play live. So I had to put him on here in the honorable mentions. Now, next is T-Jack. T-Jack's a good shot creator. He has a 90 plus win percentage. But the reason why I couldn't put him higher on this list because he doesn't use the variety of moves. I don't feel like he completely utilizes a shot creator ability like a person like Tassino does. And one of his things is he often ignores his teammates wide open, I'll see. Like, if he gets double team, he won't he won't pass to the person wide open. He'll just put up the shot and hear one of those people that's like, get the free board. He, that's how he plays. And but he's played a lot of competition. I have to give him credit for that. But it's like he's lost some of the big games. He's lost to Ticino when he went on PS4. And a lot of people blamed him for that loss. He um, lost to Grinding the Power. He lost to Bandit. A lot of the big games and competitive games because he's lost in. But he's still a very good shot creator. Now, last on the honorable mentions is I'm Davis. He's a good play sharp. He's an exceptional content creator. But he doesn't seem to like take the game that competitively to get on that step on this list. And I haven't really seen him play many competitive games enough or seen him play live, kind of like G-Man to even put him on the top 10. But he's a good player. He's a good play sharp, very good content creator, makes great videos, but not enough to put on this list. And that concludes, and let's go to number one. Coming in at number one, you know what they say. To be the best, you got to believe you're the best. So number one, I have Power DF. I gotta say, man, this man Power DF plays completely uniquely different. And what he does is he just utilizes moves that nobody ever utilizes. The jab steps he does, nobody else in the game does jab steps like Power DF. They really don't. <laughs> and the fake passes he does, like, I don't see other people fake passes. It's like, no, you'll never see another player play like Power DF does. It's just completely unique. And to me, I'm just my opinion, guys, he's one of the most well-rounded, complete builds and players in the game. He's good at defense. He's good at rebounding. He scores. His build is like the ultimate overpowered build. It's like he cannot be stopped. It really is. He really can't be stopped. He can also play with anybody. You can put power on a team with anybody, any archetype, and he can play with them. A lot of the other people on this list, they play, but they can only play with the select person. You know what I mean? They can only play with that one type of person they can only play without one archetype power can play with a play sharp power can play with a scratch power can play with a glass cleaner power can play with a lockdown power can play with a shot creator he can play with anybody and that just makes him so versatile and well-rounded he doesn't rely on anybody he can rebound himself he can shoot himself he can play the defense himself he can guard anybody he's basically got locked down on the court with his gold bruiser and silver pickpocket and he's won with multiple people. He's won competitive games. He's won big games with grinding. He's won with IQ. It seems like anybody on this team, he just wins. He wins with everybody. He consistently won big games everywhere. He beat Nadats. He beat Bandit. He beat T-Jack 2-0 in the series. And he every, every single big game that he seems to play in, he just continues to win, 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 and win. So 
you gotta give him credit for that you definitely gotta give him credit for that and that's why he's the number one player in nba 2k19 okay guys that will conclude the video if you guys made this far make sure to comment what you liked what you didn't like about the rankings what would you switch around who do you have higher who do you have lower who do you think deserved the spot that wasn't even on the list? And remember, if you guys like these type of things, I, if we get 4,000 likes on the video, I will do a My Park Awards thing like Orlando did. It's going to be lit. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I am out. Back. I can't be trusting because people be switching and starting. I had to go get me some money. They always was fronting. I had to stay up to sign. I never trust up at night. Seeing that drip on the bone. Make sure she won't come.